the tense vote. Zimbabweans went to the polls on Wednesday and yesterday and polling marred by delays. Tabiso Goba has more. Among the issues highlighted by the head of the SADC Electoral Observation Committee, Dr. Nevas Mumba, was the sudden increase of nomination fees from 50 to 1,000 US dollars. He says this prevented many candidates from being able to stand for election. Never says there are allegations of police coercing citizens to vote a particular way and that the state-owned media was biased towards opposition parties. Results for the Zimbabwe elections are expected to be announced on Sunday. Tabi Sokoba, Eyewitness News. President Cyril Ramaphosa's diplomacy skills were in sharp focus this week as the country hosted the highly anticipated BRICS summit. The mega event held in Santon drew more than 60 heads of states from around the globe, including the original BRICS members. Talks about a new world order, increased trade among the bloc and calls for de-dollarization were top of the agenda at the meeting of the emerging economies. A fine Saturday in store for Hoteng tomorrow. Lerato Hufela, Eyewitness News. You may begin to feel anxious or excited. Honest, deliberate, engaging, uncensored. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind and execution. This is a normal response. Are you ready? Where are the sports worldwide? Zezray Ellis is trying to stay calm, but for everyone else, it's complete chaos. I would like to say, job well done, coach. Coach, I've got a question to you. Let's assume that the World Cup was starting tomorrow. Would you apply same strategies, same tactics, and same formation, and same human resources that you utilized in the previous World Cup? Coach Des? Most definitely, yes. As a South African football lovers, we are very good at uh, criticizing without knowing the inside information of uh, what's happening to the team. A job well done. Congratulations to her and, and, and her team. She did us proud. And now I won't question her selection because I trust her. More compliments, less yada yada. Uh, South African women's football will never be the same again. I mean, she has brought the ladies of football in South Africa on another level. What was the words which she impacted impacted, uh, to the girls? What are the words that you impacted on the girls most especially? Look, Rob, we knew why we were there. That was the most important thing, and the players knew why we were there. And we said we can do this. We could have won this. The whole Israelis were saying that we could have won this World Cup. Why? When you look at the teams that was left, and you look at how we performed, yeah. We had a chance like everyone else. It was such an open World Cup, um, Rob. Spain won the World Cup, but they lost 4 0 to Japan. Um, Brazil didn't get out of the group. Germany didn't get out of the group. Robert Marawa, live on 947. Puma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. Let Betway take you to new heights with one of the most popular casino games around, Aviate. Yeah, countdown has begun, hey? Just a couple of hours to go before the box lineup against the All Blacks. Looking forward to that rugby match, and I'm sure all eyes, yeah? Certainly going to be in September's Rugby World Cup in France. Uh, but, hey, both New Zealand and South Africa insisting that they are only focusing on tonight's showdown in front of uh, something like 82,000 people at Twickenham. Uh, the two rivals are going to be facing off in London uh, for their final warm-up game before the tournament uh, with both sides promising that they won't be holding anything back. I know people always talk about, yeah, it's a friendly game. There's nothing friendly. Uh, you would have seen last week the Wales game, same thing. Uh, nothing friendly about that. So hopefully it's going to be one of those, you know, typically physical encounters. Uh, the All Blacks selecting arguably their strongest side, while the Springboks have also rolled out uh, their top-tier team as well. Let's find out, though, from the assistant Buck coach, Zondile Steak. Once again, if you can look at what they've selected, they probably selected close to the best possible team they could have selected. And same goes with us, you know, we've selected a team that's good enough to, to perform on a day and win the game for us. And uh, 
the pack like you've touched on it. It's the pack that played in the 2019 World Cup for us. You know, uh, if you look at the combination we've got in front, looking at guy like Faf, he has done the job for us. And Mani Libok currently probably our best 10, you know, playing week in, week out. I think it's a key thing also for us to get proper combinations in those uh, in, at, at the back, you know. Uh, unrest is and it's, it's, it's been coming, you know. Every time he gets an opportunity, he's performing for us. And uh, Ketli Arense, my pimps, he's been around. He's done the job for us. And then I think it's also fair for a guy like Damien Vellamsa to get a fair opportunity at the back, you know. He's been with us for the past probably five years. And so I don't think when I look at our team, but we, we see a very, very experienced team. But it's a matter of now giving some guys also an opportunity, you know. And once again, listen, playing against the All Blacks is always going to be tough, you know. And I think for those guys, they'll be able to also me measure themselves if they've got what it takes. A lot of you have also been asking us, is Mo Salah going to be leaving Liverpool? I, I don't know. I think uh, the head coach, Jurgen Klopp, has got all the answers. But it's always a bit difficult to, 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 to talk about media stories. So because there's nothing to talk about from our point of view. We don't have an over... Um, Mo Salah is a Liverpool player. Um, obviously, for all the things we do, essential was, will be. So, yeah, there's nothing there. If there would be something, the answer would be no. Yeah, the answer would be no, hey? Wouldn't be. Now, one man who has certainly seen and done it all as far as the football is concerned is coming up next. He is my guest. Tonight is a Friday, which means it's hashtag Legends Night. There are sports worldwide. They said it's going to be Chiefs hosting, so I guess I have to go to Shane McGregor first. Shane, do you ever wish you were on the field again, or is the new Shane McGregor life and path a happy one right now? Well, I'm not happy, you know. My, my previous team are not doing too well at the moment, and it, it makes me quite sad. Um, I wish I was there to help them out, but, uh, you know, these are the things that happen in life and in football, you know, you move on. He's a striker's coach at Manchester United, Benny McCarthy. Why do you think we don't go that route in this country? Coaches are scared that you're going to come in and try and take the position. Um, and you do need it. Uh, and as much as as a striker, you need attacking coaches. There are sports worldwide. Monday to Friday weekdays. Friday nights. Always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. There are sports worldwide. You're going to absolutely love our legend tonight. I mean, what a player this man was. A very, very rare breed. A class act, as many people described him as. And very few players, though, were as free-scoring as him. Now, a complete definition of what they called a goal poacher. An NSL player of the season. Also, the player's player of the season. If you go back to 1989, he was prolific. Won three league titles with Kaiser Chiefs. Also part of the class of 92 that won the double. Now, during the 1991 season, you formed a deadly partnership, yeah? You know that strike partnership with Fanny Matita, uh, scoring 54 goals between them. 54 goals between them. I mean, that's a partnership that regarded as the best ever during the NSL era. I, I don't even know up until today if there is a partnership that can ever match that. Maybe you can share your thoughts uh, with us if you think there is. Let me know. I mean, he banged in the goals for Kaiser Chiefs, Super Sports United, Pretoria Callies. I mean, he was lethal, passionate, so passionate that at times he was even accused of being very and overly arrogant. I mean, come on, arrogant. Shane, hey, who was he? I mean, he'll tell us why he had that fallout with a certain national team coach. <laughs> there was a bit of an altercation with an influential club boss at some point. Verbal exchanges with opponents, referees, everybody was in the mix. Uh, what an honor, what a pleasure, though, to host the legendary Shane McGregor. Good to see you, sir. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Rob. Uh, always good to be here with you and very kind words. Thanks, man. I didn't miss a beat there, hey? Did no. I misrepresent you at any stage? No, you didn't. Um, you probably got it right. Yeah. You know, when, when I played, when I walked over that line, it was a different story. I was a different person, so... You know, I wanted to win all the time. There was no such thing as losing. There was no such thing as uh, coming off, uh, leaving anything behind. So friends or no friends on the field, that was it. They knew when I played, um, that's it. I wanted to win. So you were a beast? Well, you're not a beast, but I, I did put myself about a bit. Come um, on, Jen. We, we saw you. We might have been little kids then, but we could see the fire, the desire in the eye. I'm not saying that you're a bad boy in any way. 
Only what three, two red cards in your entire career? Two yeah, red cards. Not, yeah, not too many, you know. So um, that just shows it all. But it was the world to win, you know, Rob. Yeah. That's a big difference. So I went out there and I wanted to win every game. I wanted to score goals. Mm. I wanted to be the best at what I could do. And uh, when I went on that field, it was all about that. Off the field, a different person. How different? Very different. Very quiet. Yeah. Uh, shy, unassuming. But as I said, you know, put me over that, that white chalk, it's a different story. But what was it, though, about the football? Because, I mean, you track back your career. You, you're almost like a, a teenager when you started off at PG Rangers. Well, very young. I just came out the Air Force and yeah. um, I, I actually wasn't going to go to Rangers. I went to Vitz for uh, a long while. I was there for nearly two months on trial. Yeah. And I got told, um, sorry, you'll Not never make enough. it a professional. You'll only be a good amateur player. Who was there at Vitz who told you that? Mark Kenning. Mark Kenning, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> but how did that make you feel, though? I mean, obviously disappointment, yes. But what did it say to Shane McGregor? I just wanted to prove everyone mm. that I could do it, you know. And uh, luckily enough, uh, Des Backus gave us a call, uh, myself and Gary yeah. Matthews at the time, and uh, said, come down for trials. We went down on the Tuesday, we signed the Thursday, played the following week. And what are your games like when you played against Vitz University? Always good. I uh, scored a lot of goals against Vitz. So, um, it was also just to prove a point. You I was going to say, there must have been an internal anger that came through in a good way, though. Not to say it was personal, but you wanted to prove to them that, hey, uh, you know, you wasted two months of my life. Basically, yeah. Uh, you know, you always want to prove uh, someone wrong. And yeah. uh, I basically did that. I think he's kicking him. Well, he would kicked himself straight after that, you know. We, we scored a few goals against them. But, you know, the Rangers team, uh, what a team we had there. Um, yeah. No stars. All just played for each other. And that's, you see, the difference where I learned. I learned at Robertson in my amateur days, yeah. and these guys were exactly the same. We went on that field. We fought for each other. We stood by each other. Uh, how many games did we finish at 10 players? I don't even know. Um, but we still won the league the second year. But what was it about, the, you know, the teams back then? And, and that's always intriguing when I bring in a lot of the legends is just to understand with little money. I mean, you got paid, what, 250 rand a month. At PG Rangers then. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could afford your Ford, was it the 1600 <laughs> that you bought back then? Uh, so, you know, it, it meant a lot. It was a lot of money back in those days. But it was never about money. And that's what a lot of the guys say when they come through here. But the quality of the football, um, the rivalries that were out there, whether it was a Hellenic rivalry, Cape Town Spurs rivalry, whether it was Highlands Park that was here, whatever it was, it just brought out quality. Maybe you, you can tell me, because nowadays we complain about the quality. The money is much better. Yeah, you know, Rob, it's, it's about the passion. Uh, we had, all had a passion for the game. We wanted uh, the game to improve, and we wanted to win, and that was the difference. You know, you, you, you speak about now with the money, and, and money is much better. Yes, it is. But do they have the passion? Do the guys put in work in after training? Do they do the extra work? I don't see kids, I don't see uh, teams doing that. I don't see players doing it. So for us, it was about passion. You know, I worked a full day job. I used to go train on my own. I used to take balls down to my local soccer club, Robertson, at a big fence, and I just used to knock balls against the fence. Things like that, you know. And even when we turned pro, I used to try and stay in and get guys just to ball, knock balls into me so I can knock it into the back of the net. People always say, you know, you're lucky. But, you know, what happens when the ball comes to you? It's a natural reaction. They don't do it nowadays, and, and that's the big problem. But why do you think that's the case? I mean, yes. You see passion in Ronaldo, and he's earning more than most. You see passion in Messi. Yeah, even now, playing in America, he looks like it's it's an exhibition game. He's having fun, but he's still breaking records, taking the team into finals. You're seeing many players who are so-called past their prime still have that passion. So why do you think the younger generation of footballers now, and especially here in South Africa, don't have what you had? Because it's too easy, Rob. That's the problem. You know, everything yeah. is too easy. You sign a contract, you think you've made it, um, especially at some of the clubs around, you know. You get a contract, a big contract, all of a sudden you've made it, you, just, you don't have to work hard. And that's the big problem, you know. It's, you've got to start. That's only when you begin to start working hard is when you've got that contract. And you've got to, you actually got to put yourself out there even further. But it doesn't get done. But so. you, you also had a desire to want to go play overseas. Now, when you say the guys are too comfortable, they earning probably big bucks for South Africa. Some of the clubs can afford to pay big bucks. So there is no desire anymore, despite the fact that we do have so many South African players playing their trade overseas. Maybe we just don't know that they are there. But the ones who are comfortable are comfortable. But producing football that is not at the quality 
that you were able to produce? Yeah, that's a, it's a major problem. Um, as I said, you know, they get too comfortable. They, they don't want to try harder. For me, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sin. You know, you got given a talent. You should be using it to your full extent. Um, if they're not going to be doing that, I'm, I don't know why. Uh, for me as well, I, I can't understand that you can't work harder, that you don't want to improve. You don't want to go play overseas. You don't want to be the best that you can be. Um, you know, maybe it's because you're comfortable. Maybe it's because you, you've made it, but... You know what, I would have always tried harder. I've always wanted to better myself in whatever I've done. So um, very, very strange, I must be honest. You know, uh, when, when you confirmed that you were coming onto the show, one of the things I wanted to do was just make a note because you were a winner. Trophies were Shane McGregor. And I might have left something out, but I tried a note. NSL, 1989, 1991, 92. BP Top 8, 1987, 1989, 91, 92, 94. JPS Knockout, 1988, 89. Main State Cup, 87, 92. Iwisa Spectacular, one of my favorite tournaments ever. Shame on those who destroyed it. 1986, 1987, 1988, 89, 90. Olsen's Challenge. 87, 89, Castle Challenge, 1990, 91, Panasonic Cup, 1986. Yeah, that's about it, I think. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure if you've missed that a few, but uh, yeah, you know, but that's that, you know, that is the difference, Rob. You know, we, yeah. we, we, we wanted to win those things. We wanted to go out there and win. And I learned, I learned properly from my amateur club, Robert Chim. We were yeah. very much like that. I mean, I started there when I was 15 playing Versailles. We won trophies and we were winners there. I mean, we won the amateur league, we won the amateur cup. And that's where I learned as to do that. And a lot of the players from Robertson moved on to Rangers, to other yeah. clubs. So it just showed you we had a grounding. Uh, Terry Payne was the coach at one stage yeah. there, you know, and, and we were all wanting to win. Uh, that was it. Uh, it was all about winning um, and even training, Rob. I mean, I, people used to hate me at training because I kick them. I fight because I want to win. You know, training games, when you go through the, uh, yeah. the motions, you're going to do that in games uh, on the weekend. Wow. I wanted to win all the time. And, uh, so even, you're breaking legs at training? No, I didn't break legs, but even when I was but coaching. It's that commitment, though. The, the commitment. Yeah. Even when I was training, yeah. um, when I was a player coach for super sports, I used to make sure that it was competitive because if you don't, you're not going to be doing it on the weekend. So, you know, it was all about winning. And for me, sure. when I played my sport, I want to win. A winner. A winner he is still 2023. When he come back from the break, I want to find out from him what his thoughts are on uh, the current Kaiser Chiefs team that he made so great. So remember, the greatness of that club. And I had the most wonderful privilege of going to the uh, village this past week for the first time in many, many years. And I looked at all of those trophies. Uh, you know, I was always a fan of the JPS knockout special. And I looked at that trophy and it brought back such memories. And there was the Olsen's Challenge. There were all of these cups that obviously don't exist anymore. But man, what does Shane McGregor say about the current Kaiser Chiefs? Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. Let Betway take you to new heights with one of the most popular casino games around, Aviator. Place your bet and watch the plane fly. Pick the right time to cash out and you could win millions, all from the palm of your hand. Sign up today at betway.co.za. Licensed and regulated by the Western Cape Gambling and Racing Board. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to participate. For gambling counselling, call SARGF on 0800-006-008 or WhatsApp 076-675-0710. Elevate to greater heights and win big with Cell C. Get the Huawei Nova 10 for only 479 Rand per month on a 36-month Elevate 2 contract with any time, data, social and any network minutes plus get 30 gigs free data that's 10 gigs per month for three months sign up for upgrade for your chance to win big with cell c call 084145 go online or in store valid until 11 september t's and c's apply cell c change your world buy big save big with checkers hyper this weekend only get half lamb for only 98.99 per kilo all gold tomato sauce Mrs. Ball's chutney or Cross and Blackwell mayonnaise. Any three for just 79 Rand. And baby soft toilet rolls, 18s, two for only 249 Rand. Limit supply. Valid until Sunday at all Checkers Hyper stores. City M, celebrate. The 
the CTM Tile Sale is now on. Discover the perfect tiles for your living room, bathroom, kitchen and outdoor. Get A-grade tiles from just $79.90 per square meter and large format tiles at $129.90 per square meter. Stand a chance to win a 40,000 Rand CTM voucher every week when you spend 4,000 Rand or more at any CTM store or online. T's and C's apply. Doing my accounts is a bit like a time sponge. It's really time consuming. Anything that can help me and make my life easier. Give me five more minutes to spend with my daughter or get together with friends earlier on a Friday night, I will honestly take it. Sage Tools helps small business owners have more time for those precious little moments. Sage, helping business flow. Visit sage.com today. Price Busters is now on at House & Home. Find a lower price anywhere else and we'll beat it. Like a Sony PS5 console and controller, now only 11,399. Save a massive 1,900 Rand. And a 301 litre LG silver combi fridge freezer with water dispenser, just 10,999. Save 1,000 Rand. Put our unbeatable prices to the test. Deals valid until 29 August, only at House and Home. T's and C's apply. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Superwoman. Tess is trying to stay calm, but for everyone else, it's complete chaos. We went to the World Cup ranked 54th. We've moved nine places now to 49th. The best ranking ever. And that, for me, deserves a big congratulations. We need to play against stronger opposition. And it, start, and it starts now. Because that's what we need to get better rankings. Pro- um, yes, but not just better rankings, but playing against better opposition Absolutely. all the time. And if we don't play better opposition, we're going to get left behind. But South has come through by giving us the USA. USA. Not just one game. Two games. Two games. And you're going to be on the bench for both of those. <laughs> and Banyana Banyana just do not know when they're done. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. I was going to ask him this question, but it looks like a voice note has crept in. Good evening, uh, Mr. Marawa. Good evening to the legend, Shane McGregor. Uh, Mr. Marawa, it's very good when uh, you bring... Uh, those former players in studio. My only question to Shane is that we have seen that the Kaiser Chiefs have struggled in recent years and uh, their players are struggling to get to their best form in terms of uh, performances and uh, we can take a look at last season. We hardly saw a Kaiser Chiefs player being selected uh, for a national team except the squad which was called up this week. What the real problem at the club? Can he explain or say his opinion? Because it seems as if it's more than what we saw with our eyes on the field of play. Thank you, Mr. Marawa Kuto. Smogalini, thank you so much indeed. Shane McGregor is my guest here tonight. You're listening to hashtag MSW Live on 947. Love and for my FM, Rise FM, Sowetan Live, live on the YouTube channel. Uh, so if you're wondering what Shane McGregor looks like in 2023, uh, go to the YouTube channel. Uh, it's still pretty much the same. You would see him, you would recognize him. Hey, he hasn't become like a, you know, sumo wrestler at all. He's uh, taken good care of himself. <laughs> but that, that's the million dollar question, though, Shane, that everybody asks. What's the real problem at Kaiser Chiefs? Well, you know, there's there's a lot of major problems there, not small ones, major problems. You know, there's um, when I played, there was one person in charge. That was the big man, Kaza. He ran everything. He controlled everything. Um, you know, I, I feel sorry for him at the moment, so having to see his beloved club gain where it is. Uh, there's a lot of infighting within the club um, and wrong decisions made, you know. Um, players that have been bought, if you look at some of the players they bought, uh, don't suit Kaza Chief style. Now, when I say don't suit their style, they're buying six foot six strikers, but Chiefs don't knock a long ball. So, you know, how do you make that decision to buy that kind of a player? Um, that, that's where you've got to go back and look. Who's buying the players? Who's making the decisions? 
Um, and then we got to go to their coach. Um, you know, the, the last season they had an inexper inexperienced coach uh, and his assistant is basically inexperienced in the same position. So obviously they needed help. And then what do you do? You go and put in another inexperienced coach to to control them. I mean, I don't understand him. And when I say inexperienced, he hasn't really coached in a Premier League. So how do you make him coach of the biggest club? Well, one of the biggest clubs in Africa. Doesn't make sense to me. Leonardo Castro, Samir Nokovic, Caleb. There's been Lazarus Cambole. There's been a Luis Macha. There's been a Michel Caetzavaro. Uh, there's been a Christian Saile that have come through. So I've just made mention of a few. Have any of those made an impact at Kaiser Chiefs? None at all. Um, unless you're talking about penalties, then one or two of them could take penalties. But the rest of it, nothing. I mean, what, what have they contributed? Uh, what goals have they scored? What have they done for the club? Uh, if you look at it, and that's what I'm saying, who's buying those players? Who's bringing the players in? Uh, the scouting system is all completely wrong. And people go back to talking about sundowns. They're lucky they got all the money. But if you look at the way they do it and they look at the way they bring players in, they know exactly what players they want. They know what players are going to be good enough for their team and they know what players are going to suit their team. That's the big difference. Chiefs just bringing players for the sake of bringing players to keep the fans happy. But are you keeping the fans happy? You know, there's been lots of talk in press, let's boycott games and that. That's not going to solve the problem. Um, we, you've got to get to the root of it and start solving it from there. Um, it's just one of those things that they need to do and look down and say, look deep and say, let's start all over and, and let's get a coach in that's going to be experienced and can help the team as such um, and start from the beginning again. You, you've always spoken about a no-nonsense Jeff Butler as being one of your favorite coaches. Why? You no, know, I was very lucky, yeah. uh, Robert, when I went there. Um, uh, I'll never forget the first training session I walked down when I met him. Um, he walked up to me, punched me in the stomach, told me in no uncertain words that I'm fat. I show I can't really say exactly what he said. And he made me go do laps. Now, bear in mind, I was top goal scorer the year before. I'd been big at Rangers, just won the league. You know, coming down there, I'm thinking, well, I'm going to walk into the steam and start playing, you know, because that's you, what you thought. Not to him. He made me go do laps and he did this for a long time. I did it for two weeks, three weeks. And he brought me in slowly. Now, very cleverly, because we all know what Chiefs, especially back then, what the Chiefs fans were like. If you came in and you didn't produce the goods, you were going to get the chains. Swap, yeah, yeah. off you go. So straight away, yeah, straight away. Um, he knew that. Yeah. And so he brought me in slowly. And that was the difference. He, he gave me a chance to settle in the team. He gave me a chance to find my feet. Um, and gave me the chance to actually go out there and prove myself, which, once again, I love doing that. So I want to prove to him. I actually said to him, I think a week before he started playing me, I said, Coach, just give me a chance. I want to prove to you that I can play. And, you know, I got the opportunity. And luckily, I took it and I scored a few goals and we, <laughs> we had a decent goals. team, you know. <laughs> a few goals. I told you, this man is not about bragging and boasting, which I do understand. And there's a major irony, though, you know, when you, when you track your story. And that irony also revolves around Jeff Butler. Became your favorite coach. Was supposed to be the first coach of the national team of Fana Bafana. Wasn't. Had to do with CVs and all of those things. Uh, but then who was the man to take over from him? A uh, certain scream at Shabalala, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And you and Screamer probably had a screaming match. Something like that. Um, the game against Zimbabwe. Yeah, the game against Zimbabwe. In Harare. In, in Harare. Uh, the first game, well, that he picked me. You know, he didn't pick me for the friendlies against Cameroon and, yeah. and such. Got picked for the first squad in Zimbabwe. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I'm, I don't keep quiet, Rob. But I, I, I tell, and I'll say it the way it is. You know, mm. we were training one way of playing the ball up, which is my strength, holding it up, knocking it off, playing around. Um, I'm not the one that's going to run after flick-ons from players. And we had film there. We did that the whole week um, and then leading up to it on the Friday evening, we went to the town hall, which is the norm, yeah. and he saw the defenders, all short guys, Shanghai, uh, remember him? Francis. Francis. Yeah. Uh, but he could jump, he could leap, he could win his. Uh, as soon as that happened and he saw that, the next morning he just changed the whole system. Now we're going to knock long balls, Shane's going to run onto it, look at how short they are, we're going to win every header. 
I think in the first half we didn't one header. I mean, Fulham Singer was getting out jumped left, right, and centre. Not my strength. My strength was holding the ball up, bringing players in. Um, at half time, I let him know. You know, I told him exactly what I thought of his tactics. But what did you say to him? Because, you know, for those who don't know the story, is that you you told them off at half time. Uh, you were then substituted, and you were never called up to the national team again. Never again. Um, but you know. It, People don't like criticism, and especially, you yeah. know, I was wrong in doing it in front of the players and, and, and the way I did it. Sure. Uh, I understand after that, mm. but I was angry because of uh, I'm a winner. I don't want to go out there and just compete, you know. And yeah. um, we had trained one way, then all of a sudden changed it, so it made me very angry, and, and that was it, you know. I had my say. I told him exactly what I thought. I said, you know, we, we, we playing the wrong game. He hasn't won a header. I haven't won a header change the game mm. and that's all I said when we had words um, yeah pulled me off after five minutes in the second half and that was my my career done mm. after that I got injured and uh, that Ooh. was it so many caps for Bafana only one just that one just the one until I opened my mouth at half time my goodness I, I always said as well that Jeff Butler yeah and you're absolutely right uh, no nonsense character uh, I mean who messes around with Dr. Kumar and puts him on the bench eh? good evening Rob and good evening to Shane McGregor uh, I just hope all is well with you guys there in the studio. And uh, thanks once more, uh, Rob, to give me an opportunity to say a few words to one of the prolific strikers South Africa has ever graced. And uh, I happen to have an opportunity to play, I think, against him when he was still at PG Rangers. And he was then my teammate at Kaiser Chiefs. What a striker, what a gentleman. What a friend. At Kaiser Chiefs, we used to have a, a motto in terms of uh, players that will be signed from other teams and we have played against. So there's a little bit of a treatment that we give them, which is not a negative one, but uh, it's positive just to welcome the new player. And unfortunately, Shane, he never got the treatment. I don't know how he managed to escape that. But having said that, the night is all about Shane McGregor. I just want to say to Shane, um, thank you very much for making my job easy on the wings because you are forever at the right place at the right time. You would convert crosses, passes, anything that has to do with a goal scoring opportunity, made it make it look so easy and simple. But when I rewind, the situation it wasn't at all easy but Shani I know very well that uh, in some instances uh, when we're playing together Kaiser Chiefs because being a boy that grew up in Soweto some of the crosses never came early they were delayed because I was busy with the number three I had to eliminate the number three before I could cross and that was my strength but I know the late Jeff Butler it, uh, I remember we played um, Celtics BP semi-final Kings Park Stadium I delayed to cross the ball for you and Matida and the coach yelled at me uh, half time and when I looked at you I could see that frowning face you know like play those balls early but uh, today I just want you to know that that was not easy for me to do that I had to deal with whatever is, was in front of me before I could cross that ball to you because if I don't eliminate them you wouldn't be able to score those beautiful goals but uh, I must say that uh, what a prolific striker I enjoyed playing against and I, I enjoyed having you as my teammate you have done so much in South African football and also for the national team I just want to say to you may the almighty God bless you and protect you may the Holy Spirit grant you happiness and also i'm hoping that you'll present the country with a junior mcgregor because we're really struggling in the country we don't have strikers like you you made things look so easy you were scoring those goals when you have the opportunity you're scoring those goals but today it's so unfortunate that we don't have players of your caliber but jenny i just hope robert will let you know or he will tell you who am i but I enjoyed each and every moment playing with you, my brother. Oh, Shani, I forgot one thing. I just wanted to find out, are you still allergic to grass? <laughs> Please <laughs> let me know. <laughs> oh, Dr. Kumalo, the famous jersey number 15, allergic to grass. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, all my life I've been allergic to grass. So it's one of those things. What happens to you? 
Oh, I come out in big halves, look like the Oros man, you know, if, if it catches on to me. But, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that you live with, you know, antihistamines, sprays, uh, all that type of thing. Uh, not many people know that, Rob. That's um, crazy. But, you know, the one good thing about it, yeah. I never have to mow the lawn. Oh, but then when you go and play in a freshly mowed oh. lawn, then it's a problem. It's a big problem, and that's why the antihistamines came in, yeah. the, the, the pump. You know, when we trained, um, when I became fully professional when I moved to Supersport, I used to have to train in a full track suit in the middle of summer. Oh, People yeah. didn't realize it. They thought, well, he's trying to lose weight or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that. Just sweat it out. It wasn't that. It what, was what's the, what's the, the special grass. treatment doctor's talking about that wasn't metered to you? Um, I think the Mooty that he's talking about, Ooh. if I'm not mistaken, you know. But did you uh, avoid it? I mean, you've spoken before that uh, you know you welcomed it. I think you got to it was it Super Sport where you use the combination of uh, uh, what was it? Was it sunlight or something and polish, black polish, polish yes. Vaseline, Vaseline polish, and, and, you, and you went to smear it at the at the door of the Kaza Chiefs dressing room or something. And they refused to go into it and, until the referees told them they have to, you know, and. Uh, I, all mind games, you know, Robert. I, I learned a lot of, of mind games through through Terry Payne and through a lot yeah. of a lot of things, you know, coaching. When we played cheese, we made the field smaller, narrower, yeah. because then you don't give them a space. Little things like that. Wet the field when you're playing against teams that are used to playing on hard fields. Wet the field. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, the players didn't have uh, six stud boots. Things like that. Little small things, but obviously, you know, be naughty with the mootsy and. Uh, and even Tommy, you know, the late Thomas Marachach, Marachach, you know, yes. used to walk on the field and chuck Sprinkle his, something. Chunk his uh, tea leaves on the field. You know, it, just, it was all just mind games. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it was good days. And thanks, Doc, for those kind words. You know? sure. um, he, doesn't, he doesn't tell you that he got pulled off a few times by Jeff Butler by and Butler. put on the bench. You know? Exactly. That's what I said. It was, you know, Jeff was very brave because nobody touched Doc when he started, when he made his debut. I can uh, remember sitting next remember? to Doc at Orlando Stadium mm -hmm. in the stands and the crowd's giving uh, Jeff a big uh, heaver, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, he knew what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, it taught him a lesson. Um, he did it for the next three games. He knocked the ball early and then he went back to his old ways. <laughs> oh, Doc, I, I've never heard Doc almost become a pastor. He he was, yeah, I don't know, maybe he's changed. Then we must look out. Maybe, you know, oh, pastor yeah. Doc. Yeah. Pastor Doc, you pastor know. Doc but you know, the one thing people don't realize as well, Yeah. that when I left Rangers and went to Chiefs, there was a certain player there wearing my jersey number, and I was really upset with that. I took the number 14 by chance. Oh. I was always number 15, and a youngster by the name of Dr. Kamala was wearing the 15, oh. and I couldn't convince him to give me that jersey, the number. But then you made 14 the jersey. I was looking at social media now. People were saying that it was revered. They wanted to have that number 14. So Doc made 15 the 15 that it became, yeah. and you made 14 the 14 that it became. And and that was obviously Doc taking over from Big Yan Madomboli Chaba from before, you know, mm -hmm. with that famous jersey number 15. All right, going to come back after the break. Shane McGregor, lots of your tributes as well that are pouring in, eh? Hi, Robert. It's A.B. Molloy from Naturena. Uh, you are having a... Very, very top striker there with you. A prolific uh, striker of times by the name of Shane McGregor, Shane Puller. Please ask him if ever was he approached to give some tips or maybe perhaps coach the Kaiser Chief strikers because uh, it looks like they, they always have a problem of putting the ball into the net. Thank you very much. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. Load shedding is a controlled way to balance the supply and demand of electricity on the power grid and to prevent a blackout. ESCOM and government are working hard to solve the energy crisis and improve power generation capacity. If we all switch off and use as little as possible, we could help reduce load shedding stages. Let's work together by switching off to reduce load shedding. 
It's your last chance to win with Checkers and SA's biggest solar giveaway. Stand to win one of 120 home solar systems when you buy any participating products and swipe your extra savings card. Plus, save on Parmela cheddar or Gouda cheese, 850 grams for 119.99 each. Doritos chips, 145 grams. Buy any three and save 20%. And Parmelat Everfresh Full Cream or Low Fat Long Life Milk, one liter six pack for 99.99 per pack. Valid until this Sunday only on 6060 and in all Checkers stores. Oh, my sister. Sister, get. 7 a.m. traffic. Now a taxi driver is hot on your tail. Beep, 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 beep. Then he passes in the emergency lane and he pulls a finger to you. CB, Iman. Now Mr. Finger is pulled over by traffic police. Come on. And as you drive past, you say it. Yeah? You deserve it, you momish. Justice. It's a small pleasure. Like catching a king value meal. No fingers. From a very small 39.90. Only at Bigger King. Let's be honest, we all need a break. A moment to escape the grind and just take it easy. To shrug off what's on the news and enjoy chilled views. With Suzuki, everything is made easy. Affordability? Made easy. Our range of vehicles offer you quality and value without knocking your budget. Fuel efficiency? Made easy. Enjoy longer journeys and fewer trips to the pump. And when it comes to fun and adventure, Suzuki makes it easy. Experience the thrill of the open road. Make the easy choice and have it all with Suzuki. Visit suzukiauto.co.za to view our deals. Hip hip hooray, it's Hirsch's massive birthday sale from the 22nd of August to the 18th of September. We have incredible deals on your favorite TVs, appliances, beds and more. Save a whopping 6,000 Rand when you purchase an LG 8.5 kg washer dryer combo for only 899. These and other amazing birthday deals also available online at Hirsch's.coza. Hirsch's, we will save you money. The Great South African Sale is coming and it's bigger than ever before. Your holiday plans are never going to be the same. Get a taste of Mzansi's wildlife with an adventure in the bush. Feel the ocean waves run across your feet as you relax by the coast. Or take a walk in nature as you reach the peak of Mzansi's mountainous landscapes. Get up to 50% of all travel deals when you book between 4 and 10 September. Visit shortleft.co.za. Book now and travel later. After all, it's your country. Enjoy it. Because nothing's more fun than a short left. Hashtag TravelWise Mzanzi. T's and C's apply. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. We're going to be heading off now to Budapest. We've got uh, Nori Williamson, uh, who's going to be joining us. World Athletics Distance Running Coach and also World Athletics Course Measurer and a World Technical Delegate uh, coming through live from Budapest. So, Wayne Sneiman. And you talk about him retiring and then coming back. Retiring, it's almost like a George Foreman love and hate of a sport that you <laughs> love so much. I believe placing 21st out of 47 starters. Uh, in Oregon, he did the 20 kilometer and the 35. Today, he did the uh, 30, uh, 35 only. He suddenly decided that he wanted to uh, compete. He, he obviously qualified last year with, uh, with Oregon. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Evening, Rob. Uh, Rob, I, I don't know how to thank you because for me, uh, you have brought one of the uh, exceptional players, uh, a goal poacher, a prolific striker. For me, Rob started following Kaiser Chiefs because of the likes of uh, Shane McGregor, Fanny Madida, uh, Neil Trovi, uh, Lucas Khatebe, Dr. Kumalo, Triple K, Tim Kulu, and uh, uh, Rudolf Seale, Rob, and Zima Pique because for me, uh, that class uh, made a car professional. They understood what it means to play for Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, they went out of the dugout week in, week out with one thing in mind, but to please the supporters and to bring uh, the desired results. For me, Rob, I cannot support any other team uh, other than Kaiser Chiefs because of the likes of uh, Shane McGregor. Thank you so much uh, to the legend and uh, thank you so much because I fell in love with football because of the likes of you. Uh, hoping you, wishing you all the best and thank you so much for all the great memories. Deboko, yeah. Deboko, thank you so much indeed. Giving praise and appraisal, saying one of the most exceptional goal poachers the country has ever seen. All right. I'll allow Shane to respond. But you know what? I'm surrounded by tributes, man. I'm surrounded by tributes from the shareholders. I'm surrounded by tributes from former players. And I'm sure you know this one, Shane. I mean, he's oh, he was known for his defending. 
But right now, he is a doctor. Not in a Dr. Kumalo sense, but a medical doctor. Good evening, Shane. This is Howard, your ex-teammate. I hope you've been doing well. Shane, before you joined Kaiser Chiefs, we were a very successful team. We played good football and we won a lot. But boy, oh boy, when you joined Chiefs, all that was about to change. If we went from a good team to a strong team, you taught us, Shane, that if someone pushed you, you must push back. If someone kicked you, you must kick back harder. That if someone tried to bully you, you should not allow, you must stand up to bullies. You taught us how to be a team, that when a teammate was in trouble, you go and assist. When a teammate needed support, you always there to support us. And because of that, Shane, we were able to win a number of trophies. You know, today I can honestly say to Shane that my cabinet is full of trophies only because of your contribution. You changed the team, Shane, that was good and you made it very strong. You gave us self-belief and you always showed us that no matter what happens, we must believe in ourselves. And I'll forever remember you for that. And you know, Shane, now I know why and now I know also that the chief supporters were right in changing your name, that they changed your name from Shane to Chain, because of you, Shane, we're, able, we're always able to do our best. And because of that, Shane, the many players will never achieve the kind of success that we both achieved. And for that, I'll be forever blessed. And I'll always remember the good times that we had. God bless you, my friend, and keep well. Oh, Dr. Howard Freeze, man. Yeah, Howie, thanks, man. That was brilliant. Uh, a very good and kind words. But uh, what a player, you know. And uh, I played against him a few times. He, yeah. he doesn't tell you that he kicked me a few times. But uh, anyway, you know, that was all part and parcel of the game. But, yeah, yeah we had a good team, Rob. And yeah. we, had, we had a good bunch of players. Uh, we fought for each other at the bench. You know what I did? I brought a bit of the Rangers there and we brought the fighting spirit. And it did help, yeah. um, you know. Certain of the players were a bit timid, but uh, yeah, we looked after each other, and that was it about, you know, and that's why we were so successful. Um, we were a team, yeah. a unit, and we won together, we lost together, we fought together, we did everything together, you know. So, and that was the brilliant part about it. I don't see that today in today's world, you know. But especially I, when you had a guy, remember, he used to wear like a, a white wristband all the time. I mean, that guy, that guy. Shane, karate man. Good evening, Robert, and uh, good evening, Shane. Shane, thanks very much for the memories. I remember the days when you were at uh, Greenacre Rangers with the likes of uh, Andy Sensic, Des Barkos in the middle of the park feeding you. You were just a lethal finisher. And when you joined Kaiser Chiefs, together with Fanny Madida, I thought, wow, this team is still going to keep on winning trophies. And so they did. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for the moments that we shared in and out of the change room. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. I'm glad I'm still on your speed dial so we can always be in touch. Happy birthday for the 5th of December. That is uh, long to come, but uh, I thought, let me stop this belated thing. Shane, I wish you all the best. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Max, go, back, go, but put you on the 5th of December. You turn what now, Shane? A uh, little 60, big sixer. So it's a big celebration. Big celebration. Wow. E every year is a celebration, Rob. You've got to celebrate all the, yeah. you know, every year you're there. And, and thanks to Marks. I mean, oh. uh, you was a finisher of note as well. And a strong man. Uh, you know, it was small, tiny, but had a heart of uh, gold. And he was very strong in tackles. Uh, he put a few people down no, uh, in his no, tackles. But the also knew where the goal him. was, you know. And that's, you, if you look back at all those years, I mean, you had players that, that could score goals left, right and centre. Noel Cousins. Uh, um, so many, yeah, you the, know. I mean, the Reggie Junches of Reggie this world Yankees, were, uh, down in Cape Town. Peterson. Yeah. You know, Calvin. Yeah, you know, Calvin. guys like that. You know, I, I, the one year, the first year I played for Rangers, I scored over 30 goals and I ended up third as in, on the third on the goal scoring list, Frank oh. McGrillis ended oh, up. Oh yes, um, you know, like that. You, you look at that. I mean, it just shows you where it's gone and where we are now. Fifty-four goals between Farney and I. I don't think Chiefs have scored fifty-four goals in two seasons. Yo, 
Crazy. You and Madita was something else, though, hey? She. She. <laughs> hey, Robert. Yeah, you are with the a legend there of this game of football. Ubaba Ushin McGregor. Indeed, he is a legend because of uh, the legacy he has left behind. Then they will call him a marksman because of the way he was playing. He would play with his back against the goalpost. You don't see players like that in this century because players that are playing up front are scared of being kicked. They are scared of takeoffs. But let me tell you, we benefited a lot from him taking those tackles, those knocks for us during our heydays. I'm talking about guys like Bo Dr. Kumalo, Bo Ace Kuse, Bo Trevor Mtimkul. We benefited because he will just lay the ball for us and then we will continue with our offensive play. So indeed, very unselfish guy. He will help us or help the team rather you know, to score a lot of goals. We formed what a deadly combination with him during our days. And it is very rare these days to see such a combination between uh, strength and speed. Because as you recall, I was quite speedy and um, I used to score not, not that bad, there, Robs. <laughs> but yeah. I wish a, a shame this uh, evening all the best in all all the all his endeavors uh, in his life him and his fa family whenever you struggle my brother just know that there is god up there you can always communicate with him that will make e things to be easier for you as what skaratindwa and william shongwe will say during our days. You remember those? They were the pastors. Abba Fundi. <laughs> <laughs> he used to encourage us when the chips were down and we would push us so that we, we reach the apex of each and every game that we were playing. So Shane, my brother, coach, Ipanda. Ipanda Gelele, Robert. Mm. I tried mm. to look mm. for smaller anecdotes to talk about regarding Shane. I remember him when he scores or when he had scored a goal, how he celebrated. It was such a, a funny way of celebrating, almost similar to Max Mafa Mapunyane with that finger pointing up there. So Shane, even now, keep on celebrating as we keep on celebrating your life. Oh, Ben, funny Madita. Yeah, a man that could score goals. Uh, sure, he Both could score you. goals. No, Both he could score goals. I thought you were talking about me there, but, you know, <laughs> using the speed. But then I thought, you know, Fani, obviously uh, something's wrong. Now, obviously, Fani had the pace. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it was, Rob? We, we played for each other, and we, we knew exactly where we were going to go. Uh, he knew exactly when I got the ball where the ball was going to go, and it was just tel telepathic, you know. So we, we knew exactly where we, what the other one was going to be. And the ru runs in the box, I mean, we practice that often. I mean, every, every week we were practicing it. And people don't pick that up and people don't realize it. We weren't standing still. If you look at the strikers today, they're all standing still. And no I just want to answer one question that, uh, now, earlier. One. Yeah. Yeah. He said, have you spoken about being a coach? I was there last year, the year before. I yeah. proposed that I come in and help. At Kaiser Chiefs. At Kaiser Chiefs. You were know. you rejected? Yeah, it took them a long time to come back to me to reject me, uh, which was a bit disappointing. But uh, eventually yeah. they did. And uh, they said, no, they were changing coaches. They were doing this, doing that. So, you know, at the end of the day, mm. they do need the help. Um, but all the clubs, you know, I'm tired of if you are week in and week out, you have coaches, you have mm. team managers, you have team owners. Oh, we can't score goals. We can't score goals. But do they do anything about it? No, no they don't. No. So you know, and, and, and you there to try and assist, and, and and that's the crazy thing. I always hear it from Mark Williams as well, uh, saying that he's tried to put his hand up and try to help, and people are shutting the doors in his face. I'm looking at um, a YouTube channel. A lot of the comments are coming through, guys. Thank you so much indeed for tuning in. Um, Stephen Quezza says, "Ah, oh, one of the best strikers Chiefs have ever had. Goal scoring machine, uh, strong on the ball, highly motivated." 
uh, in Kukuletu. Every striker wanted to be called Shane, a true legend. Stanley Poku uh, says, well, he gave a true analysis of Kaiser Chiefs, and you wonder why such people are not employed at the team to add value uh, in keeping the legacy of the club going. I mean, you were talking about the man, even I think uh, Fanny Matita talked about uh, the pasta uh, at Kaiser Chiefs. Hey, Robert Morrow. It is actually a great honor and a great privilege for me to be able to speak on behalf of this man. He obviously arrives at Chiefs during Jeff Butler's time, and uh, it's not like he's a newcomer in the league uh, playing for the Nika Rangers. Very pro- problematic striker. And everybody will recall from there that Shane already has made his name as a striker at, at Greenica Rangers. But, uh, you know, playing for Chiefs, it's a, a different kettle of fish altogether. And uh, I wasn't too sure if he'll cut it out. Uh, having uh, the strikers like Max Maponyan, uh, Scarlet Tintua, and all Samoro Kulu, and all the, uh, those that have been there before. But, uh, you know, hey, Shane arrives. And he adapts very quickly into what Jeff Parker wanted as a striker. And, you know, it's all about combinations, about all the understanding of certain uh, individuals and the team in the position uh, that you play for. And uh, somehow, for some reason, Shane strikes it brilliantly with Fanny Madita. And right from the onset, you could see that something was cooking here. And uh, unbelievable. (laughs) I'll stop. It is favorite word. Unbelievable. I'm going to play the rest of it. I know you had a story to tell. Uh, we're just running out of time. But William Shongwe, a man I respect mm-hmm. with all my life. There's many sides to this gentleman, isn't there? Yeah, far too many sides to him. <laughs> cool cat. What a man. I mean, brilliant. You know, the yeah. pastor himself. You know, he always used to preach to me. Um, yeah. You know, but... Uh, I did my preaching on the field. Uh, that was that was where I wanted to do it. Well, he was uh, on the bench sometimes, you know? Quite often on the bench. So you know, he, he, he was competing more. against good goalkeepers at that yeah. stage. So Wade Duplessis, Gary Bailey. Gary came through, yeah. Yeah, so it was very difficult. But uh, when yeah. he was called on, he did his job, you know, and that was it. But he kept us on the level, uh, which was uh, very good. <laughs> I mean, imagine you retire from football and you move from being called Kuru Cat to being called Juicy Lips. Man, jeez. Yeah, evening, Rob. <laughs> Evening, Shane McGregor. Good to hear you still going. Uh, just Julian Prenia driving home, sending you hello. Cheers, but keep well. Oh, Julian, thank you so much, man. A lot of people just driving home, tuning in, listening to the legend. Just your response, though. I mean, we've got 30 seconds before we got to wrap up and go. Um, you know, the love, the devotion that people are, are showing you uh, also says that it's not done. I mean, it's a landmark year for you. Turn 60. What then for Shane McGregor? Well, Rob, you know, I'm trying to get back into it. Um, I'm working now as a as an agent for MCS Sports. Um, yeah. I'm doing the TV show, but uh, I've been watching a lot of talent lately. People say there's no talent in this country. There's lots of talent. It mm-hmm. just needs to be nurtured. It just needs to be taught the right way of doing things. Um, you know, th- there are players out there. you just got to be looking for them. You've got to go out and find them. And I'm going to be doing that over the next uh, couple of months and years. And Please we'll share. See. Please share the information. It's been such an absolute honor and a pleasure and a privilege, Shane. And I know we haven't even touched the surface of your wonderful career. And I thank everybody that sent WhatsApp voice notes, messages on the YouTube channel, messages on all social media platforms. The one and only Shane. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW.